Call to order the January meeting of the Town of Newbury Human Resources Board. Present are Mark Blackman, Chair. John Farrar. Anthony Antico. John Lucy. Diane Will. We are all present on the count of the First order of business to approve the minutes of the prior meeting held on December the 9th. If we can take a moment and read through those. Everyone had a chance to read through? Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the meeting, the minutes of the meeting as written, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Minutes are accepted. Next order of business. Employee issues, John? Uh, I don't think this falls into that. It's probably in the four, but we do have um, vacancies that we're looking at. We did have um, one of our uh, reserve officers took a position as a full-time yeah. communications officer in Salisbury. Yeah. And one of their uh, requirements is you can't hold a position in any other okay. uh, in, in the same uh, field. So this so, is something you'll be advertising? In, uh, yeah, we're actually in the process right now of, uh, we're more interested in looking for uh, communications personnel uh, as opposed to reserve officers. Um, that's that's what we're looking for right now. We actually uh, interviewed um, one person who looks like he's going to work out pretty well. We're going to um, finalize that. Um, and we, I actually have been meeting with another one tomorrow. Great. Tomorrow morning. Um, we both look like really good candidates. Um, so we'll be going through that process. Um, I think, is, was there a PA yet submitted yet? Do you, do you know of? For? For, um, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, Marsh? Nope, Kamash, he's the one that left, Joe Kamash yeah. left. Um, the name of the, the other applicant is jumping out of my head that they're looking at about seven or eight things like that. Um, uh, what was his name? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, was there a recent PDF? Yeah, I'm going to go up. All right, I'll talk to the Chief Commissioner that he's done. Is that from somebody from within that's getting moved? Yes, the new one we're looking, we're looking at bringing in. Oh, okay. There's one that we're looking at bringing in. I, I, Goals are to right now what we have is the comm position covered by reserve officers who do double duty that you know they can work the desk or they can work the room. Uh, we're trying to get them off so the desk on yeah. the road. We just have uh, civilian um, dispatchers. So we just dedicated to this. Yes. Okay. So we don't need Joe left, but he was a reserve officer, so we're not really interested in filling on the reserve officer right. position. The right. displacement of getting a. a CEO here is going to free up to get stated that position. So it looks like it's all working out well, but that's okay. uh, just, I guess, the, the big thing is Joe Marsh has taken on the position. Yeah. And he's okay. Had he been with you for a while? Long time, yeah. Really good. Real good. Yeah. 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 And uh, he really worked out very well. You know, um, I can't blame him for yeah. looking for full time with benefits. He's got a family, you know, and uh, so. Well, we've talked for years about the fact that this oh, folks does such, yeah. such a great job of. Yeah. The hiring process, the onboarding process, the training and development, yeah. that they're, and then they're, they're right for the picking. Yeah. And, uh, you know. But we'll get there. You know, yeah. we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get there as far as you know, getting it staffed up to where we, um, where we like to be. Yeah. Um, but um, that's, the, that's the philosophy right now, uh, just yeah. moving the reserves off the desk and hiring a couple. And with, okay. the, with these two prospects, I think that will help us. Okay. As always, if you need other support with the interviewing process or the evaluation process, the board is available on as needed basis. So. Okay, anything else with um, employee issues and or personnel actions? Nope. Um, nope. Uh, yeah. Okay. Diane? Um, we do have a few things that are percolating as we're entering into the budget season and starting to look at staffing for the beginning of fiscal 21. Okay. Um, I know Tracy said a couple of things that have come her way that she just hasn't had time. She was out last week um, to go through a couple of um, classification questions from the library as well as those, right? okay, yep. as well as an additional one that came through the inspectional services department as, okay. as Sam was leaving. So okay. there's a couple there um, that will need to be addressed at some point, but we'll have to check right. with her. Right. She and might have some time to digest. Okay. And at this point, everything is all set with the uh, the temporary or the 
interim building inspector. inspector. Yeah, he seems to be. Yep, so we have an interim building inspector with um, the resignation of Sam Joslin. Um, he is the building inspector in Mount Mac and has been um, just providing us with some hours to right. cover and keep things moving from a building um, permit perspective. So right. he seems to be working well. He seems like a nice guy. Good. And the last communication I saw from Tracy on that was that she was involved in the process and she felt pretty good about you know, perhaps sometime in February that she would have a replacement in place. Yeah, I know she's been conducting interviews. So, so I do know that she has a couple of things that will need our um, our attention, and I know we, we finished the inspectional services review right. and, and so forth. So, right. um, but other than that, okay, good. Yeah, I was familiar with the ones in the library. There, are, there are one or two that may require uh, classification subcommittees uh, meetings, depending on how. Uh, how Gene and Tracy work out change in responsibilities and added responsibilities and so that's yet to be determined, but that's something that might come our way in the next 30 to 60 days. So. Okay, thank Thanks, you for that, Diane. Anything yeah. else in personnel action job vacancies? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay, discrimination and ethics issues, nothing to discuss at this point that I'm aware of, at least not yet. Safety issues, John? Mm -hmm. Other business, Sick Pool Bank, manager's letter, Corey update. Oh, yeah, I know Tracy has just come back from uh, some extensive traveling, and so she is up to her eyeball. I don't think she's going to join us today, so I think we'll have to again uh, defer on manager's letter and Corey update. Um, yeah, did we finalize the Sick Pool Bank as far as? Where are we with that? No, we're not, we're still all free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the things I need to talk to. Uh, we were going to get some sort of a, a rendering or opinion from town council on who owns what related right. to uh, sick days, hours, you know, you know are, we, are we in a position to even consider people donating uh, their hours and days? Uh, so that's yet to be determined. Okay. So what I'll do as an action item is um, I will plan to schedule some time between now and the next meeting with her. Okay. Not that she's not here to okay. get an update. I mean, there's a wealth of information out there in, in, in the Commonwealth uh, Bank of Information in, in small towns and, mm -hmm. and in banks and police departments. And in my benefits business over the years, I didn't participate in them, but understood them. They're a hedge mechanism. It's, it's just one extra disability pool where somebody, uh, after they've been with the company for so long, they've been uh, contributed or been contributing their own measure for a period of time uninterrupted. Uh, then they may have withdrawn from their, their bank account uh, two or three days uh, on a one-year basis, annual basis rather, and that's just frankly a hedge mechanism. That if I if I have six and I give a nine and I give away three, uh, there may come a day when I need fifty, right. and, and and basically um, it's a shared hedge mechanism. Uh, but you need you need a an awfully good. Uh, conscription sign up group. Uh, if it's a stamp group, it doesn't work. I know that we've been talking about this yeah. for a very long time, and I think that what we had sort of landed on with not having the question answered about right. whether or not it's a it's a benefit that we own and have the ability to give away, but I right. think the way that we were sort of leaning and, and landing on was to do a sick pool bank on an as needed basis. I think that's what we sort of had talked to Tracy about and she felt that that would be so. In other words, it wouldn't be a formal, like sick bank, because the administration, as we determined, would be very cumbersome and the you know the process by which. But I think she had said that she would be fine with the idea that if we had somebody that needed, you know, had a catastrophic event and yeah. needed a couple of days contributed at that point. That in the past we've done it, we've done it that way. So I think that's what she was leaning towards. Well, I, I think in so. Our previous and, right, and in part. It's based on some of the homework I did three months ago, speaking to a number of local uh, Newbury-like municipalities in terms of form of government and population. And, <clears throat> and if, if you recall, uh, the answers were all over the lot. You know, if I talk to ten, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing this. Uh, I think you know seven probably said. Uh, you know, we thought about it, but we can't touch it. It's just too cumbersome. It's, it's uh, uh, you know, your, your eyeballs will bleed. 
you know, going through all, all the whys and wherefores of it, to have said, you know, they, they did put something in place, an actual policy, and that, you know, fortunately it's, it's, it's a policy that rarely gets used, you know, it has, it has dust on it, uh, and so uh, it was some of moot. And then I think there was one that said, we do it, but to Diane's point just now, we don't have a policy. We did not want to be tied to a policy, burdened by the language of a policy. And so it's very simple. If once every five years uh, someone needs it, a request goes out on a volunteer basis, who would like to donate? And you know, whoever whoever's interested is interested, and it's kind of the way it works. So it's an ad hoc basis. And I think she even said that it would go before the board selection. Because the other part of this was yeah. if you have this formal policy, you have a committee that decides is 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 you know is Mark sick enough right. exactly. to get what, what a donation? You know, so there's a whole host of yeah. liability right. and administration issues. But I think I think back in 2009 we had a situation and it was done as a yeah. you know so and so was yeah. out sick of right. cancer and they and it was done right. informally. Now that still doesn't answer the original question, which is who owns the days or who owns the hours. Uh, so we still have to address that. But once that's settled, if it, if the determination is that it's within the realm of possibility somebody could donate X number of hours or X number of days, then it becomes, you know, do you create a policy around it or do you do it at home? Oh, in, a, in, a in a formal plan, once donated, there's no reverse. Yeah. It's gone. Right. I, it sits in the pool, and, and, they, <clears throat> and they, again, it's a hedge mechanism. They're hoping that that generosity, that, that little piece of, uh, of gift, is uh, maybe someday down the line going to take one care of one of my family members. Right. Right. Yeah, I think everyone on the committee was, yeah. I mean, on the board was, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good policy or a good thing to do to it's help. A, it's a feel good exercise right. until you get to the fine print. Yeah. Well, the fine print would be <laughs> yeah. a full time administrator. So and you know where that's going to land. <laughs> well, that, that's a great point because you know even if even if this policy is not used over a five year period, you're still donating. Every employee is donating over that five year period, and and the accounting for that uh, is it can be mind numbers. But all also uh, wouldn't you be donating on an ad hoc basis only? Well, rather than, we're rather saying rather than, versus a formal. You know, if you're going to get two to two days every yeah. year. Where is that? Uh, that's, right. No, that, that's a policy plan, but, right. but it is yeah. an ad hoc plan the way you did it a few years back. 2009. Where, yeah, you, know, you went out and had a plea for yeah. generosity. I believe the whole thing <laughs> could be done on an ad hoc basis. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the, so the underlying question is, you know, do people have the ability to do that? Yeah, that's so. that's the fundamental well, question. So, okay. so I know that these three items have been sitting on the agenda right. for quite some time. So, so why don't we make a commitment that perhaps you and I can sit with Tracy between now and the next yes. meeting and Schedule. She's not available to come with us, and you know, none of them are code red at this point, fortunately. But nonetheless, we mm -hmm. want to get them off the agenda. So, so there was, um, I'm sorry, go, go, go. so there was a request made for someone to come before the board, right? Um, with a question regarding a policy. Yep, and um, I was approached to um, put on the agenda um, a question about a policy that the town has. That mm -hmm. person has since asked to be removed from the agenda. Okay. With the understanding that they were going to see if they could discuss it with Tracy, um, have a, a, okay. a solution outside of this committee. So. Okay. So. Um, outside of it, so outside it is, of the HR board. Right. So. So, you, so you I just, just wanted you to understand that. Okay. I, I, That's what I was wondering why. Yeah. yeah. She had asked to have it taken off. Okay. So. It had to do with. Um, the vacation carry forward policy. So as the policy stands, um, I'll just give you a quick, yeah, just the question. So when we revise the policies and um, procedures of the town in the, in the manual, um, we carry forward the vacation carry forward policy, which was at the end of the fiscal year, which happens June 30th, if you have any unused vacation time which you've earned, you have the ability to carry that forward for a period of 90 days. You can carry forward an unlimited number of hours. If you have 12 hours or 50 hours, you can carry that into the new fiscal year, but you have to use it by the end of the 90 days, which would be September 30th. Mm -hmm. That policy hasn't changed. It's been consistent since I've been here almost 10 years. The one change that did occur was it used to be limited to 24 hours. Now it's unlimited time. So 
the old policy under the bylaws, if you will, you know, the old bylaws that had to be changed for the town meeting. So we did, Tracy even said, okay, let's let everyone take carry forward because what was happening was the last week in June, everybody had vacation time and the, the office was empty because everyone was using their vacation time. So the, the policy has been consistently, you can carry forward unlimited time to September 30th, but you have to use it or you lose it. So I was approached to see if there was flexibility with changing that policy to allow for carrying oh, forward beyond that September 30th yep, date. Yep. But the person who's requested that is going to meet with Tracy okay. to see if she can come up with an exception basis to either extend it a little bit or pre-use the vacation time. So the other thing is we don't want people pre-use their vacation time if they haven't earned it yet. Right. So you can't you can't start the fiscal year on July 1 and take three weeks of vacation and go into the negative because you haven't earned that time because you haven't been here for the full year. But this particular person has a very busy office from the time of April to October. And so they can't they can't pre-use it and they can't extend it. They're kind of caught in between. So the idea is on an exception basis to have some flexibility to allow that department mm -hmm. to use. So she's going to meet with Tracy. Okay. I had requested that she come off the agenda. That's right. actually a very reasonable request. Yeah. Uh, well, especially given the fact that it helps it helps the town. Yeah. Right. You know, was was maintaining the right level of staffing and and exceptionally busy time. So, but it sounds like the kind of issue that might eventually get to the sport, anyways. It may or may not. I yeah. mean, you know, we've never. Well, it's, if it's just if it's a if it's just an exception basis, then it doesn't. If we don't touch the policy, then yeah. yeah. Okay. And Tracy, I mean, my conversations with her were that she didn't see the need to change the policy yeah. because the policy allows you basically 15 months to use your vacation time. Mm -hmm. um, right. Okay. And that's been a consistent policy all along. So that's why it's not on the agenda. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other new business? No. Next meeting is scheduled for February 24. p.m. February 24th. Everyone good with that? Mm -hmm. Consider that firm. Thank you. And if there's no uh, further or new business, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye.